Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Hutchison. Today, I wanna to share with you the three pillars of structural health, alignment, curvature, and stability. Alignment has to do with the relationship of one bone to another, and alignment can be gained or lost pretty easily. You could throw a ball way too hard, sleep in the wrong position, have a full day's work at a desk, and throw out the position of the bones and need to get realigned. Curvature typically is developed pretty well as we grow. However, due to a number of different things, our spines can develop in a way where we never had good curvature to begin. This could be called scoliosis, or we could have a loss of lumbar lordosis or a forward head carriage, even as a young adult. And one of the suspicions is that some of these individuals who develop very poor spinal curves as they're growing up, outside the realm that they have been in poor postures, their whole developmental upbringing on the tablets, on the phones, sitting incorrectly, eating wrong, and not holding good form, but that they had some kind of upper cervical instability and so the body is constantly trying to balance for that upper cervical instability. And in the process, it loses its curvature and creates tension in order to create artificial stability up higher. In other individuals, they grow with really healthy spinal curves and over time can lose these if they don't perform what I call spinal hygiene exercises, which could be a maintenance plan when somebody gets better and graduates from our office or some of the programs that we'll be releasing soon to show you how to keep your spine healthy. With a spinal hygiene program, there may be specific exercises or weights that you do periodically to offset many of the effects of modern living on our spine. Thirdly is stability. And stability comes in two fashions. It comes from the muscles and tendons that connect on and pull bones into positions and on the ligaments, which are passive and just prevent excessive motion of bones. So when you think about stability, I recently saw a video that Dr. Chris Centeno with Regenex did, and he talked about how stability comes both from the muscles and from the ligaments. And this is something that I've been preaching for a long time. To obtain stability, you need not only the passive ligaments, which limit excessive motion of bones, and the muscles to work together. And many people undervalue the importance of strengthening the tendons to bring muscular stability because the muscles where they connect to the bone is through the tendons and the tendons are what pull our spine into different positions. When we get tendinopathy or degeneration of tendons, our muscles shorten because they're constantly under tension from the tendons not being able to pull correctly when we try to move. And one of the most common pathologies we see in our office is when the muscles of the neck and shoulders get damaged from a tendon perspective, that they start to shorten and pull us into this hinged position. When you're in this hinged position, and if the only thing that you're targeting is adjustments or treating the ligaments, but you're not working on creating a way to get the spine back into this position, and feel natural and at ease when you're in the position that you should be in, you're gonna have a very limited recovery. You know, back just a couple years ago, I didn't realize the significance of the tendons and I would continually be doing, you know, 10 rounds of adjustments with somebody that every time they would leave my office, they were in the right position and they'd keep coming back like this. They'd keep coming back like this and or with one side lower than the other. And I've seen this also with people who are pursuing regenerative medicine where they may have a certain amount of instability on their overhang view, or they may have another finding that's in like maybe muscle spasms in the back of their neck. This one is actually all too common. People will go in and they have muscle spasms that continue to return after they get soft tissue work performed or something that calms that muscle down. But on a motion scan like a DMX, they might have minimal amount of instability and people associate, well, it's gotta be that the ligaments are weak, but they come in the office like this. And so they're walking in the office like this, you know, they're maybe trying to pull their shoulders back and look up, but they have this terrible hinging where all of the posterior neck tendons or many of them are likely atrophied or degenerated, inhibiting them from actually taking on a correct posture. 
where they're going to get rid of all those muscle spasms if you improve the health of the tendons and you'll get a proper shape in the muscle. The trapezius so often in this upper back, it's supposed to have a little bit of a rounding to it. And for so many people, it caves in like this. So rehabilitating the connection there and making it effortless to sit in a position where you're up taller here should be one of your early thoughts when you think, wow, I keep getting chronic tension in the back of my neck, in my shoulders, and I can't get out of this position. I can't hold a good posture. If you can't hold a good posture and you feel like you're being tugged down, yes, look, you could have extreme ligamentous upper cervical instability. But if you only have a moderate amount, it's more important initially for you to be able to get out of this hinge and get into a position where you feel a little bit stronger here when it comes to your function, okay? So when you're in this position, you're gonna be able to move without constantly throwing out the alignment and you're gonna be able to improve the curvature and if you get treated correctly by somebody that can stimulate repair of the tendons in the various muscles that can help you hold your better, you'll also be improving your stability. Once you've improved the alignment by being in a better position, the curvature and the stability from a musculotendinous perspective, you're going to then be a much better candidate for regenerative procedures to the ligaments. Remember, the ligaments are passive, meaning they do not help you at all with movement throughout space. So the ligaments limit excessive motion of the bones. But if you're not able to move in a correct muscle activation pattern and you have degenerated tendons, then you're constantly gonna be putting more force on those bones and on those ligaments, which is gonna mean that you'll likely need a lot more work for them to repair in a significant way. A couple of things that you can start thinking about as you decide where to invest your time, your energy, and your resources, if you have any kind of neck tension, shoulder pain, uh, complex neurologic symptoms related to a problem in your neck, whether it's affecting a nerve in your neck, an artery, a vein, if you feel pulsatile symptoms, if you have crazy head pressure, you have difficulty swallowing or breathing, your heart rate goes nuts. You have difficulty focusing and brain fog, things like this. One thing to think about first is, am I able to hold a correct posture and hold my neck in the right place? And if you're able to do that, and then you go ahead, you get a scan done that shows that you have instability, upper cervical or throughout your cervical spine or shoulder, then you'd probably be thinking, wow, well, I'm really a great candidate to get some ligamentous stability because that's a missing link. But if you have incredible difficulty holding a good posture, you know that like one shoulder is hiked higher than another, you kind of, you know, really have to force yourself to try to sit well, and then you fall out of it really quickly, and you get a digital motion x-ray done, and you find you have a moderate amount of instability. Let's say there's a couple spots where there's two millimeters, maybe your overhang is two or three millimeters. And, you know, you really should think, how can I first get myself in a position where I'm upright and I can hold it right here. First of all, all of your symptoms might go away just from that. Your instability may also reduce. Just last week, we had a one week intensive patient who came in from North Carolina. He had probably, I think it was like six millimeters of instability at C1, C2 overhang to one side. And there was also overhang on the other side. I let him know, I said, you really need to consider getting some regenerative medicine. He really didn't want to go down the surgical route. He wants to try his best to get better. And he said, Dr. Brian, I really, really want to try improving my cervical spine curve first because I saw the research that Dr. Katz did showing that improving the cervical spine lordosis reduced the amount of lateral overhang or instability that appeared on a DMX. And I said, okay, we can try this. I just want you to know that you have such a degree of instability that I really would recommend that you do consider getting regenerative treatments or a neurosurgical consult. However, your symptoms are not so dangerous and your presentation that we can't at least give this a try for a while first. So we treated him for a week every single day that week. And at the end of the week, what we did was we repeated his open mouth lateral bending view and found that there was a pretty significant reduction in the lateral overhang. Now, one of the big things that I stand for is that there is no one size fits all. 
And with that in mind, when I worked at Caring Medical, typically Dr. Hauser shared with me that he thought that people should have a reduction of about a half a millimeter of instability per every round of treatment. And, and now that's just an estimate, right? Everyone falls in a different category, but we were able to reduce this patient's lateral overhang by a millimeter within one week of treating tendinopathies, of improving the cervical spine curve, of teaching rehabilitative exercises. We were able to reduce in one week his overhang by one millimeter. And the really interesting thing, because he asked me, he said, hey, is it because I'm tight from all the treatments we've done that it looks like it's less? But you'll see on the images we're gonna show that he's actually bending further and he has less overhang or ligamentous instability that appears. So I didn't even treat his ligaments. I, we don't do that. We don't go into the capsular ligaments. So this patient didn't get his ligaments treated at all, but he got a lot of the tendinopathies, the abnormal pullings treated. His spine is starting to hold into a better alignment. So he doesn't have a two or three or five times excessive force of the weight of his head on his upper cervical ligaments when he walks around and you know doing what other people were telling him to do, which was pull your shoulders back, look up, tuck your chin. And this was all making his problem worse. Now, yes, it is true. If you have severe ligamentous instability, that your muscles are gonna have to work overtime in order to provide the other half of stability to the body. What I'm saying here is that if you have a really poor posture or you have one shoulder that hikes more than another, or every time that you walk, you have a dip in your walk like this, you really should consider getting that addressed first because if you get really detailed and often pretty expensive, regenerative treatments done to those ligaments, but every time that you step or walk, your body's going like this, or you're putting abnormal forces right back into those ligaments, it's my understanding from my experience that you're gonna get a dampened effect of what those injections will do for you. So we always try to guide people and let them know, you know, let's balance out your walk. So when you're walking, you're staying pretty level. Let's make sure that we're able to hold a pretty good posture effortlessly. Let's make this really easy first and get the curvature strong. Try to get some opening of the jugular veins. And then let's see how much instability there still is left. Adding to the work that Dr. Evan Katz did, we're seeing in our office a lot of people that are getting reductions in their instability through improving the posture, through improving the curvature, through improving alignment, through treating the musculotendinous component of spinal stability. And just to recap, the patient that came in last week, I let him know on day one, hey, you're gonna need some regenerative injections to your upper cervical spine ligaments. And he still chose to begin with the curve correction. So we're just saying, when should you place your energy or your effort into what places in order to get the most value? If you're pretty sure that the symptoms you're having are coming from your neck or your shoulders or your spine, start with something really simple that can also be diagnostic. Try gentle upper cervical chiropractic. Try physical therapy. Try working with somebody that specializes in rehab. If you feel like you're not getting some pretty quick results within the first couple of weeks, then pursue whether or not you may have some instability. Get a motion scan done, whether it's you know a digital motion x-ray where you're doing all the different motions, or if your physician feels you need it, you could get an upright MRI with flexion extension. And then consider, am I able to hold a decent posture or do I feel like I'm constantly being pulled into the wrong position? And if you're constantly being pulled into the wrong position, and it's almost impossible for you to hold the correct posture where you're here and you're relaxed in this position, then consider that you may have an issue with your spinal curvature or the tendons, which are actually what cause your spine to pull out of position. So if you have a terribly hard time holding your neck in the right position, yes, this could be caused by extreme upper cervical instability because that's gonna cause the muscles to atrophy pretty quickly and it's gonna have a, you're gonna have a hard time rehabilitating them without addressing the extreme instability. But if you find that you have more moderate amounts of ligamentous instability, fixing the ability for your body to hold itself correctly in space is going to give you a lot more value early on as you'll normalize the forces on the ligaments. So when you go to get those regenerative treatments, you'll likely respond even more favorably and potentially need less treatments in order to get full recovery. So back to the alignment, the curvature and the stability. We have one client right now that has gotten 
what I believe to be full spinal ligamentous stability. I mean, he had maybe like a dozen rounds of prolotherapy and PRP to his neck, but his C2 kept going out of alignment. Literally every week he was back home. You know, he lives in a different city and every week his C2 comes out, his C2 comes out, his C2 comes out. And he was cleared by his prolotherapist. Hey, there's no more spinal ligamentous stability. You're good. Well, we found that he had tendons in his trapezius and a couple other muscles that were pulling his C2 out every time he moved his arm, every time he moved his arm. So we treated those tendons and his C2 hasn't gone out in a month. So that's another example of the musculotendinous component of spinal stability. Now, when it comes to ligamentous stability, an interesting case study is myself. So I had seven millimeters of instability on the left and five on the right before I had really learned everything that I know today. And I was starting to get a mild S curve and by three or 4 p.m. I would feel some brain fog and difficulty focusing. I went through and I believe, I'd have to check the chart records, but I believe I got eight to 10 rounds of regenerative treatments to my entire cervical spine. And during that time, I didn't get any of the tendonopathies treated from being an athlete my whole life, being an, an ice hockey player and having a lot of small injuries over you know my years. And my instability on the left had reduced only to five millimeters. And on the right, I believe it's three and a half. So I did get significant improvement from the regenerative treatments and I'm beyond grateful to have gotten them. However, I didn't respond in the fashion that would be expected from a reduction of half a millimeter per session or something comparable to the like. And now that's led me through my research and through treating other patients to realize that I had a missing component that wasn't addressed, which I was doing curve correction, I was getting regenerative treatments, I was staying in alignment. All of the tendinopathies that I had, the degeneration in tendons, kept pulling me back out of alignment into a position where my ligaments were under more force so they wouldn't heal optimally. So since then, I've been getting dry needling to tendons. It's much different than what 95% of dry needling clinics do, where they treat the hypertonic muscle, release it, and if there's tendinopathy or ligamentous instability, then that muscle is gonna come back and be tight again, and sometimes it can make symptoms worse. So the dry needling that I do is where we target the tendon in order to bring a proliferative effect into that tendon to help it heal and strengthen. And through that, we get more spinal stability because then when we move through space, the pulling from bone to bone through tendons and muscles is more normal and inhibits us from getting pulled into a position where our bones are out of place. When it comes to alignment, sometimes it can be really hard to fix a lower neck that has fallen too far forward. Most conventional chiropractic adjustments typically move the bones a little bit forward as they do an adjustment in one way or another. So these are the people that often won't feel much relief when they get a traditional chiropractic adjustment. So think about if you have a hard time holding your neck up in the right position, you know that you've kind of been stuck in a position like this, you're a little bit forward with the way you hold yourself, then it very well could be a big component of you getting better is treating and rehabilitating all of the tendons that connect to this area because it's gonna help that trapezius come back into a position like this and get you well on your way towards full recovery, health, and healing. All right, thank you again so much for watching and we look forward to staying in touch.